Hi everyone, it's Monica. Since my diet video became public, I've had a ton of you reach out and ask specific questions about losing weight at 70 or even at 60. The older you get, the harder it is to lose weight. So I've had a bunch of specific questions. I'm gonna try to answer those questions here in this video and I'm going to try to be fairly brief. I'm also not going to try to touch my face because that's a habit of mine, right? Play with my hair, touch my face. But anyways, I'm going to answer your questions that you had about the diet and trying to lose weight when you're not young, when you're like my age. I'm 70 and I will be 71 in February. So if you are curious as to what I eat in a day and what actually am I physically doing to lose weight at 70, stay tuned. Okay, so first of all, let me just say that diet is it, it's it's different for everybody, right? I don't even like the word diet because to me it's a lifestyle change. It's a lifestyle adjustment. It's a mindset because I came to the decision that I was just going to move every day. I was just going to do it. And I was just going to keep taking that step and I was just going to keep moving. But I had help along the way, right? When I, when I, uh, I mean, I'm 70. I have gone through every diet program imaginable. I did keto, I did low carb, I did Weight Watchers, I did vegetarian, I did the whole nine years. Oh, I'm 70. I've always had a weight issue all my life. I have what is considered a slow metabolism and I am prone to being heavier. My sister is thin as a rail. God love her. She's thin as a rail. But anyways, I, like I said before, I just couldn't stand myself when I made that decision. I did consult with a doctor and I would tell you, if you are thinking about doing a diet or any new program, consult with your doctor, especially if you're an older person, because of all the other health issues that we can have, that we can face in our life. And you don't want to do anything that could impact that medically, the medical issues by you know, changing the way you eat or, or whatever. So check it out with your doctor. But the number one thing I think you need to do, if you come to the mindset that you're doing this, that you're going to do something and you're going to move forward, is figure out how much, cal how many calories, how much energy you need, how much food you need to maintain your body. Like, Breathing takes calories. Getting up and going to the restroom takes calories. Walking into the kitchen. So that's called resting energy. That's the energy that your body produces or burns every single day just to function, to keep all your organs moving and your heart beating and all that stuff. It takes energy. So figure out how much that is based on your height, your current weight, your lifestyle, and of course your age. So when I did that, I figured out that on average, when I first started, on average, my my um, my resting energy, I would be burning about a thousand to maybe maybe if I was lucky, twelve hundred calories a day, and. That was I, because I have a slow metabolism. That was really a low number. Since I have been doing this, now my resting energy has increased. I burn about on average, according to my, and I went back and I looked at my program on my Apple Watch, I burn on average about 1,600 calories a day in resting energy. That's me not doing anything, getting up out of the bed, going, walking in the living room, doing whatever. Now, I have a moderately active, I guess, day, and I do calculate that in. So I tend to like to stand up, and I have my Apple Watch. My Apple Watch every hour will say to me, walk, stand up, and I do that. Uh, when I was working in an office, I would get up and I'd walk all around the building, down the stairs, back up the other stairs, and I would do that as often as I could. So every hour, my Apple Watch reminds me to stand. If I can't go out, I'm going to stand in place. 
if I can't do anything, I might just do a little dance. I'll put a little bit of, you know, on my phone, I'll play a song and I'll just dance in the living room like a mad woman, right? Nobody's around. But the point is that I made the decision that I'm going to do it. So my resting energy has increased because of the more active, the activities I do a day. So in the morning when I get up, I get up and I'll have breakfast or I'll go into the kitchen and I'll make a cup of coffee and I'll have breakfast. Because I take medication for my uh, lumpectomy that I had, I have, to, I have to have food in my stomach to take the medication. Before, I used to do intermittent fasting and I love that. Eating twice a day worked perfectly for me. But with the medication, I have to have something. So I have something light in the morning and typically it could be uh, a, a, a regular size serving of raisin bran. I love raisin bran. Maybe some sliced banana in it sometimes, some milk. That might be my breakfast. Or I might have a rice cake with um, some wild mane blueberry jam. Oh my gosh, I love the wild mane blueberry jam. If you've never had it, you don't know what you're missing. So I'll have that. And I know it's like about 35 calories for the size, but you know, that's okay. Or I'll have toast and, and I'll put the jam on it as well. But I typically have something in the morning. And when I've done that, I'll take my medication, I'll walk around. I have my Apple Watch set so that my active calories shows on my Apple Watch. So I can look at it right now. I have had, I have burned 200 active calories and I haven't worked out yet. And that means just me walking faster, me walking in place, me doing something very physical other than just getting up and doing my, you know, the resting calorie routine. Anyways, my active energy now, my goal is that I want to have at least 800 active calories burned a day. So I'm, I'm at 200 now. I got a way, you know, ways more to go. If I make it to the gym today, if I get to work out, if I do an hour of the pool or whatever, I'll probably have 1,200 active calories. So if you do the math, if my body burns um, at rest, say 1,600 calories, because I work my metabolism up to that, and then I go work out and I burn, let's just say, another 1,200 calories, right? That's 28, roughly 2,800 calories a day that I am burning, right? So if I am eating 1,800 calories a day, roughly, or thereabouts, I would tend to lose some weight very, very slowly. And that's the name of the game for me. So I'm, I monitor my active calories. To know what your body uses for active calories, there are formulas in place. Certainly if you go to a gym or anything like that, you can talk to a trainer, they'll help you figure it out. But there are apps that'll do that. And I already know basically on the food I'm going to eat, the rough calorie count. So if I have breakfast, at lunchtime, I might just have a very light, maybe an apple, maybe a salad, but not anything heavy, not anything big. We tend to eat dinner or liner, liner as I like to call it, earlier in the day. So if we have a our big meal around 4 or 4.30 or even earlier, then I just need something light in light midday. I don't need anything heavy. And our dinner... I tend to normally moderately moderately count, not count, but moderately low carb. But if I want to have a past pasta salad and I make a bowl of pasta salad, we're going to have pasta salad. Fresh corn right now in New England. Oh my gosh, I had the most amazing corn from the car, from the farm stand. I don't care how many carbs it has. I'm, I'm just mindful of my active calories. If I've burnt, as if I've gone and I've worked out, I've got plenty to spare because... I've built myself up to that. So the whole the whole thing is to have that goal of your active calories. That's that's what works for me. It may not work for you. Keto, low carb may be your gig. Um, it, all of that may work. But for me at 70, I know it, it won't work for me now. When I did low carb and I did keto, I lost my gallbladder. I... Um, and that was a real painful. It was a, my gallbladder was extremely. I mean, I had 
I had them stuck in my, my vials or whatever it is. And I was in the hospital for two days. It was not an easy process when I had to have my gallbladder taken out. And my doctor said it was directly related to my diet. Now, again, I've been yo-yo dieting all of my life. I'm 70, right? I'm 70. I have to face reality. And, um, and I lost a lot of my hair. I lost a lot of my hair because my body wasn't getting the nutrients it really needed. And I don't want to go into starvation mode. So if I ate 1,200 calories a day with the activity level I was do I'm doing now, I, I, my body would go into starvation mode. And I don't want that. That's not good at all. And you won't lose weight. Your body's going to hang on to whatever you feed it because it thinks you're going to starve it again. So you're not going to really lose weight if you eat if I eat that few amount of calories. So it's a balance, you know, and I can't tell you that what I do is going to work for you. And if I, there is no food I deny myself unless it's something I hate. Um, we're up in Maine a lot. We've had lobsters and steamers. We've had fried clams. I've had fried clams and onion rings. If we go somewhere and I'm in the mood for an alcoholic beverage and I want to really splurge and have a strawberry daiquiri, I'll have a strawberry daiquiri. But the thing is, my Apple Watch constantly reminds me, get up and move, how much my active calorie burn is. I don't need to know my resting. I don't need my resting to be seen here because I know what my resting is. I've got that all figured out and calculated in here. I just want to see my active because that's above and beyond my resting, you know. So... That, that's basically what I do. And many of you have asked questions, how many calories, how much this, how much that. And I, I, I really can't answer it because it is different day to day. I might have some days where I eat more, some days where I eat less, some days where I don't work out as much. But I am mindful when my Apple Watch says, get up. I get up and I move. I do something. Dancing around the living room, who knows, whatever. I get up and I do something. So it's the, it's determination here. You're not you're never too old, in my opinion. You're never too old for skincare, you're never too old for you know anything you want to do, travel, go walk the beach. Whether you have a partner in life right now or not, doesn't matter. Do it for you. Make the decision you're gonna move. And that movement doesn't have to be an hour of swimming like I do. I love silver sneakers. If you are 65 or older, check with your health provider, your health care. Uh, we have Anthem, and Anthem uh, is one of the supplemental insurance, you know, that goes along with Medicare that does silver sneakers. There's many, many supplementals. Many of them do do silver sneakers, not all of them. But, and then if you go online and you, you do a silver sneaker application, totally free, it'll show you the locations near you that accept silver sneakers. And then there are many other locations it's not showing you because it's not going to show you the next town over. And that's what happened to us. I joined a local gym in my town. And then I saw that another gym had, um, had a pool that we could work out in in another town. It accepted silver sneakers. So I joined that. Um, I've, right now, I'm, I'm, I have three memberships. And there's no limitations on what silver sneakers, at least not yet, what they will do. And then if you can't get out, every single day, silver sneakers, you can go online, every single every single day they have, whether it's a walk in place program, a stretching program that you can do totally for free. Yes, it's online. You can watch your, the instructor talk to you and do it. But it's, it's so motivating it's, and it's available in most cases. So check that out and whatever, if you have a fitness app that you love, um, you know, a Fitbit or anything like that, really, really dig into how you can program it, how you can really maximize it. Like my Apple Watch, I've had an Apple Watch since the, I figured it out, since the Apple Watch 2 and I've upgraded a lot and I've usually upgraded because the health benefits or the the uh, fitness activities have and every Apple Watch has gotten better. I can't wait for the new one to come out. But I I really really love the love my Apple Watch and it took me a long time to really figure out how to really maximize the usage of it and how to customize so I look at it and I have my, the face on my Apple Watch is activity. So I can see at a glance what my active calorie burn is, how many steps I've had today, how many exercise moments, et cetera, and how many times I've stood up, right? Because you want to stand up and walk around 
a certain amount of time. That, that has like, that's been huge, guys. That's been huge having that. That's like, that's like having an accountability partner with you all the time. And, and I think that for me personally, that that's been huge. And then second, second is, you know, obviously part of that whole Apple watch thing is that active calories and then recognizing how much my body burns when I'm moderately moving around, not exercising, um, compared to how, it, how much it used to burn years ago. And, and knowing that that's what my body needs to function maximally, to breathe, to move. And then beyond that, my active energy. And then if I look at those totals and I look at what I'm eating, and if I want to continue to lose weight, but I don't want it to be fast because even though I'm impatient, but you know, I'm 70 and uh, I'll be 71 in February and your skin, I, I'm sorry, you know, your skin sex, at least mine does. So, but it's a journey and it's a mindset. So whatever, whatever it takes, you are not too old to move. And whether it's a little baby step, you know, when I sit down, this is what I do now, um, when I go to sit down or I go to get up out of bed or whatever, I never, ever push myself up or hold myself down. I, and I did this, I started this several years ago or whatever, and it, I can't remember where I learned it, but when you go to sit in a chair, stop when you are maybe almost down to the bottom of the chair and hold your body in place. It is intense on your abs, right? Your core. And hold your body in place. Don't sit in the chair and then let yourself sit down. And then work it so that when you get up, you don't have to hold on to the chair to do that. It might take a long time to get to that point. But now, I, you know, I'll go to the ladies' room. I don't need to hold on to anything to get up. I sit down. I, I do it even to this day. I go to sit down. I stop at a certain point, and I hold my body, and then I sit down. And then I get up without pushing. I do the same thing in bed without pushing, without pushing or pulling on anything. But I've worked my way up to that, you know. So, yeah, silver sneakers, my active calories, knowing what my body burns, and then figuring out what your point is, because I do not want to starve myself, my body. If I go into that starvation mode, mm -mm. if your body thinks it's starving, it is not, you're not going to ever lose that weight, right? Because it's just going to hang on to your weight. And then it'll start to eat your muscle, and then you'll feel worse. You'll be tired. You have no energy, and you'll be frustrated, and you'll just be giving up. And there's no reason to it. So... Again, I'm not an ex expert. Talk to your doctor. Go to the gym. Talk to a trainer. Search some apps. But this works for me. And if you have something that works for you, just keep doing it. Keep moving. And keep breathing. And keep smiling. Because you're never too old to do any of it. So, anyways, I do want to thank you all. I don't know when I'm going to publish this. But I do want to thank you all. I've had so many new people since that video um, I know it's not a viral video, but for me it's viral because I have a very small channel. <laughs> but um, I've had so many of you and watch the video, and I would love it if you're watching my videos to hit that subscribe button and that like button. That would just that would mean the world to me. And if you have a question, a comment, a thought, or something that works better for you, share it in the comments below because then I think we'll all learn, we'll all get better. So, anyways, thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for being here with me. Guys, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.